Greetings, everyone, and a warm welcome to another edition of Marketing the Invisible. My name is Tom Poland, beaming out to, as always, from Little Castaways Beach here on the white sand next to the big blue Pacific Ocean. Hands across the water, joined today by Barry Maltz. Barry, g'day, sir. Where are you hanging out? Well, you're hanging out in a much nicer place than I am. I'm in a high-rise in Chicago where no one wants to live these days. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, that's def definitely different to the beach in Little ca Castaways Beach, a uh, high-rise in Chicago. But your cafes there are probably pretty good compared to what we've got on at, at the Castaways Beach because we don't have any. Uh, so well, now that they're open, but when they were closed, it really wasn't a lot of fun. Oh no, no, you you heavily invest in your own espresso machine at that point, I think. Uh, yeah. Folks, welcome again. Uh, for those of you who don't know Barry, his 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 specialty, which he's been doing now for probably more decades than he cares to remember, is getting owners growing again by unlocking their long forgotten potential it's so easy in business to get so busy and to feel like you're just on this hamster wheel running harder and farther and forgetting about that je ne sais quoi the thing that you bring to the world that transforms lives and businesses so he reminds you of that and unlocks it again he's got decades of entrepreneurial experience with his own business ventures as well as consulting countless other entrepreneurs he's discovered a formula to get stuck business owners unstuck and marching relentlessly forward. Brings us nicely to the title of our interview today, Barry, which is how to make the changes you know that you need to make. Barry's going to show us how to tell us how to do that in just seven minutes. Barry, our time starts now, sir. Question number one, who is your ideal client? My ideal client is anybody that needs to make a change. Too many times, Tom, in business, people have enough success where they can pay themselves but they haven't had enough success really for their business to be exactly what they dreamed of it when they actually started this this journey. Right. So they're stuck somewhere, they don't know where, and they got to get unstuck. Perfect. Thank you, sir. So that also helps to describe the problem you solve, which is the answer to question number two. But so let me let me give you this anyway. Question number two, Any anything else about the problem that you solve that you can tell us about? Well, I work with people to actually make a change, and making a change is incredibly difficult. Right. You know, I, the reason I, the reason I wrote this this next book was because I'd be brought in as a consultant. I sit down with the CEO. We talk about all these changes they want to make. We'd have you know, this is what you got to do first, second, third, fourth, and then I'd go away. And what would happen? Absolutely nothing. nothing. <laughs> they wouldn't make any of those changes. So I looked into science, why don't we make change? And it turns out our brain doesn't want us to make a change because it's a matter of survival. We just want to keep doing the same thing we've always done. We only change, we're an incredible amount of pain and we have no choice. And I'm talking about now, what are the steps to actually make that change so you can get it done? Well, I'm all ears because I got a big change I'm trying to make. Around, around financial management. So let's 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 move on, and because this is about the audience, not primarily about me. But but oh, I, I guess that's what, what I'm my wife tells me. It's not all about you, Barry. I don't understand that. <laughs> so uh, you know, the only reason I raise that is I'm sure everyone right now listening to this has something that they would like to change. Whether they've given up on it previously, whether they 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 they're just being annoyed by it, whether they're in pain, we've all got something. So tell us. Question three, and we've got five minutes left. What are some of the typical symptoms? How does someone know they need to listen up to the rest of this interview? Well, first of all, I, what I want to get people to make the change is not a change that they think they need or someone else has told them they have to make a change, but a change they already need, they know they need to make because the motivation for any change can't be from an outside consultant, can't be from one of your, your spouse, has to be internally. And the important thing is to start really, really small. People try to start with these big changes and it never happens. Think about what is the first part? What is the first step? What does 1A look like? What does 0 look like to actually make that change? Try to do that first with the help of a mentor or some kind of support person, and then do the next one, then do the next one. You've got to start really, really small because change is hard, and you got to forgive yourself for your brain battling against it. Right. Thank you, sir. It's so question four, and we've got four minutes left. We all want to change something at, at some point in time. Uh, probably going to make some mistakes. So what are some of the common mistakes you see when, when people are trying to make changes? What, what right. are the big well, hurdles they trip over? Well, the biggest hurdles are they say it's too difficult, or they actually try it a little bit, and they say, ah, I tried it. I told you it wasn't going to work anyways, so let me go back to where it was. 
A lot of people also try to uh, trick themselves into believing that the change isn't necessary, that the devil they know is the better than the devil they don't know. Or, you know, the problem isn't as bad. I can, I can totally deal with it. Right. There's all these reasons why not to move forward. Or if they do move forward and fail, they use that failure as a reason never to look at that change again because it's never going to work. I was meeting with a client the other day. It's a family business. I told him what the solution was. He said, it's never going to work. I said, what's your alternative? You've been doing this way for 10 years. As Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different results. You've got to make that change. Right. And, 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 and being aware of those self-sabotaging beliefs that get in the way Absolutely. of making those changes is a key for that. So that brings us on to question number five. And we've got three minutes left. You gave us a top tip before about making changes. Have you have you got another one you could you could give us? Uh, it's like a, a valuable free action. Someone else. You said yeah. start small. What else? What else? Yeah, start small, and then when you are successful, give yourself a reward ah. that you actually make that change. And so for me, if I make a change, I give myself a reward, which is French fries, which I'm never supposed to eat, but I just love French fries. Or <laughs> you know, whatever, go out and take a walk or a bike ride, whatever you think you really what you really enjoy. Give yourself a reward because. You know, this whole idea of getting rewards, we get that a lot when we're younger. But as we get older, we don't match success with the rewards. We spend a lot of time, Tom, complaining about our failures, but we never celebrate our successes. And that's a problem. And that, that's probably quite important for the unconscious mind to get this idea that if we make the change, it gets rewarded. Thank you for that, sir. So question number six, and we've got just under two minutes left, a valuable free resource. Where could people go to find out more about your work? Well, you don't have to buy the book. You can get free chapters at the book at barrymoltz.com slash changemasters. And next month, I'll send you the first free chapters of the book, including the 20 steps to making change that you can do yourself. Perfect. And we'd be delighted to share that with our audience. So barrymoltz, M-O-L-T-Z dot com forward slash. Change masters. Change master or masters. Change masters. Plural. Thank you, sir. Uh, exactly. And question number seven, lots of time left, 70 seconds, in fact. Question number seven is, what's the one question I should have asked you but didn't? I thought you were going to ask me if I was vaccinated. About what, sorry? If I was vaccinated. <laughs> People keep asking me that question every time I see them. And the answer is yes. Yes. Both shots. Oh, well, thank you for letting us know about that. You're very welcome. It seems to be on everyone's mind now, Tom. It, it is right now. It is, yeah. All right. And, and how, am I, how upset am I am that the Cubs trade away their entire team? Very. Yeah, my, my second shot's happening next week. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Barry Maltz, thanks so much for your time. Tom, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.5hourchallenge.com.